and welcome to In the Word Ministries. This is uh, Shayla Crow, my co-host. I'm Larry Cook, and we're excited again to have guests with us today that we can uh, really find out what God's doing. Uh, I just want you to know that we got a God that's well able to take care of anything and everything. And uh, so today we're going to find out uh, about some uh, uh, programs to help those that are suffering right now with uh, drug addictions and uh, alcohol. And of course, we're going to find out more about this. And uh, this is a friend of Shayla. So yes. Shayla, I'm going to let you do the introduction. So this is our guest today. She's the program director of Restoration City. We'd love to welcome Miss Rebecca Kirschke. Thank also, you. Also, yes, Thank welcome. Thank you. And I love nice you. Nice to meet you. One of my dear <laughs> friends. Um, it's amazing how you can go through different seasons and come back together mm -hmm. and never skip a beat. Um, Rebecca mm -hmm. and I have been friends for about 23 Long years. Time. We met quite a while back and um, even at that time in my life she was such a huge inspiration of just trying to hear God for myself as a young teenager mm -hmm. and knowing that God could use yeah. you at, at mm -hmm. any level or stage of life so it's such an honor to have you on the show today mm -hmm. so we just wanted to um, you know find out kind of who you are. Mm -hmm. Every week we are coming in here and we're featuring different people in our community. Um, we are based out of Houston and Rebecca is in Hungerford, Texas. It's a suburb right outside of Houston. And we love to just highlight what God is doing yes. just through our lives individually Amen. that any one of us can be used at any right. moment, at any time. And um, right. what you specialize in is what we are so passionate about, right. and that is bringing freedom to captives. So right. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself okay. um, personally, okay. and then a little bit kind of about Restoration City. Okay. That almost made me cry <laughs> because I was like, no, you've been an inspiration to me. <laughs> but um, like she said, my name is Rebecca, and um, I've just been honored and privileged to be a part of what God is doing because it's all him. <laughs> yeah. He's the one that changes lives. It's, uh, I mean, if he can use me, he can use anybody. Right. And he's, we always say God is not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. Just anybody that is open and sometimes he can do more with less. So here I am. And I also <laughs> like that scripture that says he uses the foolish things of this world. And I'm like, <laughs> No wonder he picked yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, my father actually started the program over 40 years ago. I think it's been about 43 years now. So way before I was you born. You weren't even here oh, way, yet. Way, way, way Not before. way, but you know, you a know, little bit. each other since y'all were babies. Right, right? exactly, <laughs> exactly. We were I like did. one I, I, or something. Yep. But anyways, he started, it actually started as a teen challenge. So if you're familiar with David Wilkerson's teen challenge, they take in single girls or single guys guys, well, my father really had a vision through a series of events for whole families to have a place where not just individuals, but yes. And there was a lady that had come to him strung out on heroin, you know, tracks up and down her arms, a mess, hadn't eaten, taken a bath, anything. And, and he ended up leading her to the Lord, but she also had a six month old baby in her arms. So after he led her to Christ, he said, I'm so sorry we have room for you, but not the baby. But if you'll give me two days, I'll see if there's a family that can take in the baby while you go through treatment. And then afterwards, wow. you can be reunited. So she was excited. He was excited. Now, this was back before cell phones or anything like that. So <laughs> he... He was excited because he called and found a family willing to take this baby in. But unfortunately, he waited and waited to hear back from the girl, and she never called him back. And so it broke his heart, and he said, God, why would you give us a vision when we have to turn people away just because they have kids? And as we know, when people fight addictions, which is what our program is for, it's a 12 to 15-month residential program. It's a discipleship program. So when people come in, we don't really talk so much about their addictions, and it can be any kind of life-controlling problem. We just give them Jesus, and it's discipleship. They learn the Word of God, and they're just transformed. The Lord completely changes people, and we have tons of testimonies for it. But the Lord led us out to Hungerford. I know most people have not heard of that <laughs> place. We call it Little H-Town. Because there's Houston. Hey, look, there's a Bucky and then there's now, so people are getting more that's familiar right. with Hungerford. And it loves in Hungerford, okay? <laughs> Anyways, um, but no, we were led to this place, or my father was, and it was an old abandoned high school 
And so we were able to just build there and we turned some of the, um, the classrooms into dormitories. So we have guys dorms, girls dorms, and it's just a big, sits on about 15 to 20 acres. I'm not sure how big it is, but it's, it's really amazing to see what God has done that many years ago. And it's just kind of grown. We've gone through different seasons. And so it's exciting to be a part of it and see that people really can change. A lot of people believe once a junkie, always a junkie. They don't think there's hope or 12 for step people. Program or yes, whatever. yes, and we're not a 12 step. And yeah. I'm, I mean, I think it's great anybody that's helping people, but us in particular, we do have different phases of the program as you progress, and then eventually, we want you to get back on your feet, and you get a job, and you or you go to school, and we kind of help you transition into that. That's the final stage of the program, so it's not just throwing you back out yeah. there, but you still have the support system and accountability and you just need the body. Everyone, including myself, needs to be plugged into the body of Christ because we need each other. So that's one thing we definitely stress. Yeah. Were, were you born saved? <laughs> no, sir. You weren't born saved. Nope. Okay. Nope. So, so I'd like to know a little bit more about okay. you okay. than the program. Okay. To know why would you want to do this? What, what, uh, What's your life like that made you? Well, I don't have a history of drugs, alcohol, anything like that. But like I tell um, a lot of the people that come there, my sin will send me straight to hell just as much as anything else. I mean, there's nothing, <laughs> you know, I can never judge because sin is sin. And so, um, like I said, my father started the program. So kind of growing up in that environment and then the way I met Shayla, is I was on our outreach team that would go into the public schools. And so we did something and their church kind of hosted us there in Laredo. And so I was just m a part of the outreach more than I was the actual program there. And then I did other things and went to school for a while. <clears throat> Almost finished, but not quite. <laughs> um, and I, you know, pursued different things, but the Lord just put it in my heart. I don't know how or why I think just seeing the miracles of how people's yeah. lives really can change yeah. and it's so rewarding and like one of my best friends that um just to see her life change through the process yeah I mean oh my gosh it was hard I told her you were the most difficult student but the most rewarding because just to see people it's not easy yeah. but it's just it is very rewarding and the Lord just did that he gave me a burden um, to come back and help my dad and I'm more of the hands-on person mm -hmm. you know he started it but um kind of taken over but not Spirit really there's a whole team of us you I was know. gonna say but even in your life you know I know that you come from a family of siblings yes and you know you you know like Larry saying literally you were born into the ministry, the ministry. right what was that like for you because you know we're not always on a high season right um in life but when right. was that where were you really like okay God I I surrender my mm -hmm. own life, you know, mm -hmm. was that at childhood or, mm -hmm. you know, because when I met you, you were already totally, you know, all in. You yeah, were all in, you know? I was all in, but there's different, <laughs> I guess there's different facets of the, of the program and the ministry, I guess you could say, because it's one thing to just go out and be in the limelight and do all of the stuff that we were doing, doing shows and doing the schools yeah. and staying in hotels and stuff like that. But then the Lord just really, I saw a need. So you had already always been saved. I was in the ministry, yes, somewhat. But the, where God brought me um, to where I am now, as far as in the actual everyday stuff that may not be as glamorous <laughs> as the shows on the road, but um, I think he just, I saw a need. There was a need. And my, grandma, my grandmother used to always tell me, whatever um, God's will for you, is wherever you see a need then and you can meet it and you know you can meet it then that's god's will for you we don't have to oh god you know well he presents opportunities <laughs> before us and then we kind of step into that so i don't know if i'm answering your question yeah. but um i think it was something that the lord just did and made me a little more solid and sure that no this is definitely what he has yeah. for me um and there's just he's opened so many doors and opportunities and it's just been really amazing yeah to be a part I love of this Larry always says this he talks so many times I'll hear him tell you know about a situation or a story and he'll he'll say that you know 
he told God, well, God, you know, they need this or they need that or, you know, and he'll, mm-hmm. you know, the Lord will say, Ex- and you're the guy. Exactly. You know? they, they should be doing this or somebody yes. should. <laughs> well, you're somebody. Yeah. So Which that get truly on impacted it. me in my own life because there have been so many times since we've been in a relationship where him saying that has mm. really, the Lord will come back to me mm-hmm. and remind me exactly that. Mm-hmm. No, no, you're the mm-hmm. one. You're mm-hmm. the one because we're so if quick you to see do it. Then someone should do something about yeah. that. You're yeah. someone. Right. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't need a TV program. <laughs> <laughs> I did not need right. Not with like, us. This is what I needed. <laughs> right. 24 days of doing something that I had never done before. Exactly, but, exactly. But, but, you know, you said something, though, about the glamour and stuff. And, and I have people all the time will say to me something about, you know, gosh, you see all these miracles and you have all these stories. Well, that didn't come with the glamour. Right. That comes when you get in the dirt. So true. Uh, because that's where the miracles happen. Yes. Miracles don't happen where there's not a need. Right. Miracles happen where there's a need. Right. So you get to see that. It's true. You see so many needs. It's true, yes. Up. And people are desperate. <laughs> and I believe that when you're in that place, it says he's close to the brokenhearted, you know, and when they're just desperate and they're open and they don't just think they already know, we say... <laughs> A lot of times we have to help people that are religious. It's harder <laughs> to get through for God to get through to them because they think they already know. Well, where has that led them? They're still ended up on drugs right. or whatever else because it's not about religion. It's right. about relationship. Right? right. What, what, so what does that look like okay. for someone yes. watching? Okay. I thought y'all were Christian. Isn't that religion? Yes. Well, religion is man-made, I believe. It's something you do over and over. So you can be religious about brushing your teeth. <laughs> and hopefully we are, right? <laughs> but um, so relationship is you know, it's very personal and intimate. It's doing life together. It's accountability. It's messing up and then having somebody intercede yeah. and cover you or or maybe get in your face and rebuke you when right. you need it, right? right? And it's um, it's just being real. And I think not with just Jesus. customs and yeah. rituals and going through a routine. We're not really so much like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> We're not it, too it, religious. Know, there's so many people that are caught up in religion. It's true. And, and they miss, miss the, it. the joy, mm. the power, the love, the Holy Spirit, right. the presence of God in right. their life. And, and so that's why I wanted you to kind of distinguish to yes. people what you're talking about. Right. Because, you know, we, we hear these terms and sure. sometimes we don't clarify. So sure. We, we want people to know that you can have a personal, absolute relationship right. with God. Absolutely. That, that promotes joy yes. and peace. Yes. Yes. And a desire to serve exactly and because I got I got to believe that in what you're doing mm-hmm. there's some real challenges mm. that you deal with some some, <laughs> some, some hardcore people mm-hmm. uh, that just make you wonder really mm-hmm. Am mm-hmm. I, why am I doing mm-hmm. this? Is that, is that it's true? true it is true and the reason we don't want the religion thing is because you know who did Jesus have a problem with it wasn't the tax collectors it wasn't the prostitutes It was the religious people, right, that think and they kind of, you know, talk down their nose or whatever to people. And it's easy to get frustrated when you're dealing with people. I mean, they burnt the bridges. Nobody wants to have anything to do with them. I mean, they are outcasts. They they say they're going to change and they keep messing (laughs) up and keep messing up. And we know only the Holy Spirit, only God can break through those things. But we have to be him to them. They have to see Jesus in us. And if we're religious, they're not going to see that. We have to just be love to them and not judgmental. Because I think where Christians um, tend to get a little bit off is we start judging each other. We're horrible about that. I mean, we just are horrible at judging. and, And we just think, and God says, He's the judge. He doesn't need any mini judges. He doesn't need help, you know. Yeah. And But we tend to think that instead of loving and covering and interceding, because Satan's the accuser, God is the intercessor, you know. So I just know that, I mean, there's times that I do. I feel drained, and I'm like, oh, there was this person never going to get it. You just want to shake them because it's like big why, kids. Right. Well, right? and I think that's another um you know, it drives home just that thing of you better have a genuine relationship with Jesus. Exactly, exactly. You know, even yourself. Right. Or there's no grace. There's no grace in those situations. So, and and that's another way that he proves to me that I'm doing what he wants me (laughs) to do because it's 
all him and in myself, I could tend to be this way. But as I say, okay, God, you know, (laughs) he gives me his heart. And it's like, I look at people that just got done cussing me out, you know, and I just, I cry because I love them and I want to just stroke their hair. I'll do it to her, not you. (laughs) And I'll just be like, oh my gosh, because I see just this hurting in you. It's not personal. You don't have to take it personal. And a lot of times we do that because they're not attacking you. They're just, it's their own hurt. And there's just so much that lead people to to make those choices for the drugs and all that. Drugs is just the surface problem. That's not the issue. There's deeper issues. You have to see value. Yeah. Exactly. Where nobody else does. Right. And and sometimes it's really it, it's hard to see value in somebody that's cussing you out. <laughs> or they've devalued themselves. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's it's tough. Well, that I initial can. shock. All of a sudden, I feel like that little insecure scared girl and I don't like confrontation (laughs) and I do not like drama which is hilarious because look at the ministry I'm in right and I'm like God you really have a sense of humor (laughs) because oh gosh there's great byproducts yeah of of a lack of identity really it's so true Uh, Todd White always says this that you know when when he's going into minister and people are getting angry at him he's like you know creation is Mm. groaning for the sons Mm. and daughters to manifest his glory and yeah when people get angry with us it's exactly that yeah. but if you don't know who you are exactly then you allow them to determine mm. your value right and then and you i've would done shrink that back from your calling <laughs> yeah. right yeah we shrink back from our calling mm. and so mm-hmm. it's just awesome it is awesome i love it so in over i wanted to make sure to say this because in over 40 years in our ministry we have not had one person go through drug withdrawals And you have people shooting up thousands of dollars a day, heroin, Mm -hmm. you know, doing crack, whatever. And they've tried other programs and they got sick there. And so they know, no, I'm going to get sick. And so we said, okay, well, if you are, then we'll pray with you. We'll be there for you. So it's not something we promise them, but in over 40 years, what happens, and we know this is the reason, of course, the reason is God, but we also, when they first come into our program, they make a hundred percent commitment to Christ. I mean, there's not like, That's just, I'm going to try it out. Yeah. No, it is, they know when they come in, this is what you're doing. You're surrendering. You're saying, okay, God. And when you do that, God has just been faithful that they don't get sick. And the next day they're out mowing the lawn and they're not understanding why they're not getting <laughs> sick. But we know why. It's a miracle. God is still in the miracle business for sure. So I've seen a lot of those. I know for, for some people watching, you might not, really understand but i've watched heroin addicts try to go through withdrawals without jesus mm-hmm. and that's one of the most horrible oh. things you'll ever watch it yeah is, it is pathetic to watch that mm. uh for for a week going through these yeah. things i mean the shakes and mm-hmm. all the other mm-hmm. stuff and and i don't know if you realize what kind of miracle she's talking about but if you see somebody, and, and when I first got saved, one of the first miracles I ever saw was, was a heroin addict came, and we prayed with him, got mm. saved, got filled with the Holy Ghost, never had a withdrawal, <laughs> went back, started bringing his heroin addict so good. in. Yes. And, and that was really one of the first miracles we saw. Yeah. So, so when you hear her say that, I know some people out there going, what? what? Right, yeah. right, Come right. On. Or methadone, because a lot of them go to the <clears throat> other you know, treatment centers or detail or whatever, and they give them methadone, which is worse. I mean, you know, trying to quit that cold turkey, um, a lot of times it can mean death for some people. And we had a guy come in a couple years ago. I mean, and he was, uh, you know, they told him, you can't just stop doing it. I mean, you are going, you know, you can't, <laughs> These are you for could people die. that are supposed to be helping us to reach. Freedom. Right. And they said, you can't just stop or if anything, wean yourself off, but that's not our policy. You just kind of quit cold turkey or you can try to wean yourself off before you get there. But you know, you get maybe some Tylenol and that's about it, you know? <laughs> and so God has just been faithful and he just, I mean, this guy, it just was living proof, you know, that no, it, it is possible. God is bigger and God healed him and touched him. And so it's, it's amazing. Then there's all the deeper stuff that takes a, a little bit longer. You know, I always say drugs are easy for God and he can heal anyone, but it's those deeper issues that Surrender. take their, our whole lifetime, right? For God to kind of break through. And so he's still working on all of us, including me. Yeah. I'm in the program. <laughs> it's kind of funny too, is, is one, one problem the world has and when you're talking about getting off of one drug and taking something else, is you always have to substitute some addiction yep, for, for another something. addiction. Exactly. 
And if we can get people addicted to Jesus, exactly, then they don't have to look back and right. they don't have to try to grab something. They have something. Mm. And most programs without Christ are, are substituting something that, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It just keeps you more addicted. Mm -hmm. But, but mm -hmm. I want to be addicted to Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a good addiction. <laughs> Jesus and coffee. <laughs> and the gym, maybe. No. <laughs> that was awesome. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll stick with the coffee. Yes. <laughs> That's hey, great. I'm thinking about thinking about it. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I've been by a gym before. <laughs> I knew a guy funny. named Jim. <laughs> That's what they but say. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Well, you know, we do have people, you know, I think um, that, that are watching this that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe – maybe themselves have not struggled with addiction, mm -hmm. but maybe even family members right. have struggled with addiction. Right. And I know that you have seen so many. One thing mm -hmm. that I love about um, what you do is, you know, you do realize that sometimes when we're bound in any mm -hmm. in any kind of sin, it affects everything, mm -hmm. everything we do and right. everyone that we do, you know, everyone that, that is in our circle. And um, I know that you have seen people just come up out of that. So mm -hmm. what kind of word of encouragement do you have, even for, for family families? members? Yeah, mm -hmm. for family members, even mm -hmm. going like, okay, I, I, I think that's amazing, but, you know, and, w you know, mm -hmm. we can't just make someone mm -hmm. do something or choose, you know, mm -hmm. they have free will, but even believing for our family members, yes. um, salvation and right. freedom. And I don't want to sound super spiritual, but pray. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, prayer, mm -hmm. it works. It works. Yeah. I, the reason I'm here today is probably because of my grandmother's prayers. I mean, honestly, because there were times my parents actually divorced when I was 18 and, and, you know, along with my friends, I could have just gone off. And I believe that because my grandmother was not only just an influence in my life, but she prayed for me. I yeah. think that kept me on course. And then now look at what God has done instead of just becoming whoever, like the people that I could have gone with, um, you know, God has just used me in ways that I can never even imagine, but prayer, and you have to know what the word of God says, That's good. because otherwise you're going to get caught up in the circumstances and you're going to be torn. You're going to be up and down and, oh, they're doing good and they're sober for a week and, oh no, they stole from us again and they're doing this or, or if you're that person, because we all struggle with addictions stuff. Yeah. in a sense. I mean, anything there's stuff, the right? Lord. Anything. Yeah. Um, and we think, okay, this time, you know, this time is it. And then we fall and then because we can't do it in our own strength. My word to you is don't give up. Yes. So good. Do not give up because God is greater and he is able and willing. He wants yeah. you to be blessed more than you want to be blessed. Yeah, so and good. if you put your faith and confidence in him, it can't be in yourself because every time I do that, even now, and I'm so guilty, <laughs> you know, and I don't realize I'm doing yeah, it. I just start just leaning to my own, you know, it's my own strength or my own understanding. understanding. And the Bible says, don't lean to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. That means find out what his word says. And that's what you stand on. Okay. My son or daughter, uh, Lord, no, this is what you say about them. And you keep professing that regardless of what it looks like, regardless of how many times they've fallen, how many years they've been in bondage. Most of the people that come to our program, they've been in bondage for years. And they've tried other programs and it didn't work, but those other programs didn't have Jesus. And that's why. So he doesn't give up on us. So I don't give up. That. Don't I give up. That. Yeah, we've had uh, so many, of course, Shayla and I are both in, in ministry that deal with alcohol, drugs, prisoners, ex-prisoners. Yep. Uh, you know, those, those are on the streets, down and out. And we've always found uh, the same thing. Mm. that uh, They've gone through all kind of programs and I know people have spent thousands and mm -hmm. thousands of dollars right. on programs. Exactly. And then come to Jesus and, and everything changes. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I would like for you today, if you don't mind, there are people that uh, are really hurting. Mm -hmm. uh, some need a program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to uh, promote you on this, a place to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to just give you the website. It's www www.straightway.org mm -hmm. and that way you can find out if you need help a place to go and we're going to do several more sessions uh, and so we'll continue to share uh, where, to, where to go and where to get help but 
I would like for you just to sure. pray and minister mm -hmm. to those that are out there struggling today, yeah. mm -hmm. that are just, they don't know what to do. Yeah. And so if you would just pray. For absolutely, me. absolutely. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you so much for every person that is watching this right now. Yes, Father, Lord. we thank you that Jesus. they are not so far lost because your yes. word says that your arm is not too short, that it sure. cannot reach them. Mm -hmm. I don't care how dark, how demonic, how much, how long it's been. God is greater. And yes, we thank Lord. you, Lord, that you are greater. And we pray right now, Lord, that you would minister to every heart, every person, Lord God, every um, family member, Lord, that is yes. also hurting because yes. of their loved one. Yes. Lord, bring comfort. You say that your Holy Spirit is the great comforter. Yes. So we pray you would bring hope because you're a God of hope yes, that there is hope and you also bring restoration that means you restore everything yes, you God, restore our souls and then you restore our relationships yes, god so we stand on your word not because it's what we want but it's because it's what you say in your word and every word that you say is true yes. so we speak healing over yes, anyone jesus struggling name. with addiction right now in God. jesus name we say be free Yes. Be free as yes. you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. God is more than able and you Amen. put all of your faith and yes. trust in him. Yes. God will do the rest in yes. Jesus name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, Rebecca, Amen. we have so enjoyed our time with you. And um, if you are watching this, we just want to encourage you to stay tuned um, for our next couple of sessions as yes. we will get to know a little bit more about your what you're doing and some of the and testimonies. Have testimonies. That's right. We're super excited yes. about that. And if you are just viewing in for the first time, we want to invite you to visit us at intheword.tv. You can see more segments there, um, view more episodes, and find us on social media at In The Word Ministries, where you can like us, love us, share us, and even mm -hmm. partner with us in setting the captives free. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. We want to thank you again for watching. We just pray that uh, you'll be blessed today, that you'll take what you heard to yeah. heart, mm -hmm. and you don't have to live in addictions anymore. That's right. God bless you. Amen.